I was a breech baby. And as a result of the birth and the, some of the, the, the years ago that that is, and I suppose they've improved ways of delivering those awkward births. Uh, but uh, something was done in the musculature of my neck that they couldn't explain. And in fact, there was serious question as to how severe that would become as uh, in the first few months of my life. And there was, miraculously, I was healed. My parents hadn't even met Christ yet. And curiously enough, though not so coincidental since God has his ways, that a relative of my mother's who didn't even know the Lord heard this church prayed for sick people, sent in the request. The baby was healed. Uh, my parents discovered the healing through the doctor she was, the, they took me to. Doctors couldn't explain it. No, he couldn't. And six months later, uh, my parents visited the church and they received Christ there and later discovered it was the church that prayed for the baby. It's, it's a great story. And the rest is history because your family then became a God-fearing, following yeah. family. Yeah, and, and when, uh, two and a half years later, uh, uh, well, it wasn't two, it was two years later, I was two and a half, that I contracted polio too. And it was at a time that uh, life was more immediately threatened mm -hmm. than it is, is today because of the technology that's changed in medicine. So, and that both times was, uh, was healed. Uh, Mom and Daddy took me to the elders of the church, and uh, after they'd seen the doctor, and when they told the doctor after they saw him they were going to go by and have the elders pray for him, he was not happy. And I don't know if he was happy when he found out the baby was healed, but I guess he couldn't complain. Wow. Talk about penetrating the darkness. This is the book, your latest book. Why this book and why now? Well, uh, the why now, of course, is for the very reasons that you've said. The intensity of the darkness in our world is increasing all the time. And it's on so many fronts that if you're ignorant of the resources that we've been given so marvelously, uh, not only with forgiveness of sins in Christ, but his mastery of the powers of darkness. But just the, the people that just say, well, that's all God's business, uh, they, they would say the same thing about people coming to Christ if they even believed you needed to come to him. We don't have uh, a part in that. God, yeah, that, God that, will do that is a sovereign thing that uh, is done. It has nothing to do with human choice. You are selected or not selected. And if you got a lucky ticket, well, then you'll go to heaven irrespective of whatever. And if you didn't, and, you know, the whole thing is uh, regrettable. And that's not a kind way to speak of people, some of whom hold those positions very intensely and are believers. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to make warfare with them, mm -hmm. but I do believe that it's an unrealistic approach to life. The world very clearly recognizes that uh, uh, God has given us a remarkable gift if they bother to think about God. If they don't, they've still been given the remarkable gift and it's the power of choice. For those of us that know the Savior, he's given us the power of choice as to whether or not we will appropriate the victory of the cross. Now, you did make a choice to receive the victory of the cross for your salvation. Yes. Receiving the victory of the cross for innumerable circumstances that oftentimes, if we don't take a stance for people who don't know how to stance for themselves, and as was done for you as that, a baby. That's right. That's exactly right, just as was done for me. And uh, in one case, by a church that didn't even know who the family was or the child was, but mm. they prayed and uh, dramatically and dynamically and gloriously, uh, I was healed. But uh, there is a, such a, a need for the call. The boldness of, there is for the uh, of, of evil today to encroach on people's lives in the absence of discernment of people. Mm -hmm. First place we need to start interceding for people probably is in the arena of, of uh, to break the spirit of deception that fails to recognize how binding exposures are to so many things that are so corrupting. They uh, take things into their home that really are an invitation to demon presences. Mm. And uh, they, as you said, the world is acknowledging the force of those, those spirits. It's not, it's not a play day. Hell is real, Satan is real, the hosts of hell are real. And the, uh, and the dominion over darkness has been won by the Lord Jesus at the cross conclusively. When he said it is finished, 
the battle was over. But that's but. Uh, that's in the invisible realm. It needs to be appropriated into the visible, mm. and wherever it's invited, He is Lord, and He is sovereign. And the verse, of course, that comes to mind is what Jesus said: "In this world, you will have trouble, that's right. but fear not or take courage. I have overcome the world. But you're still going to have to deal with those skirmishes. Uh, there's it, victory in the end, but." We've got to put on the arm of God. The kingdom of God is that dominion where God rules. But just as we invite him to rule in our hearts, though he's the ruler of the universe, he has to be invited to be your personal Lord. And uh, the same is in circumstances. So when Jesus said, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, this is not just sort of a dreamy-eyed someday, somewhere, somehow. The, your kingdom come is not talking about the second coming of Christ or the millennium. It is of talking about the rule of God as it exists right now and can intervene in anything in this world if it's invited. And uh, de penetrating the darkness is something that is done by people who learn how to invite the light into the darkness in places that they even can't reach themselves or places that have invaded their own home, but they can't do anything except pray for the dynamics that create that circumstance or their business or their in their own struggle and as we say, warfare. Because uh, the Bible wouldn't talk about, Paul was pretty much of an exalter of the victory of Christ, but he's the one who also said the weapons of our warfare are not at the human level. Uh, they're, they're at the invisible level, by the, I should say at the visible level, they're at the human level of, of appropriation, but uh, they're not uh, visible. Uh, he said we are not unaware of Satan's schemes. Devices, right. And I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I think we are unaware. Well, I think they, we, we've really, lost the discernment. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, I brought this, this was, a course text uh -huh. uh, for a spiritual warfare course offered at Tyndale. And it's called God at War, the Bible and Spiritual Conflict. It's not light reading. But the takeaway for me in that book was every culture, every religion, the mythology of, of everything that's gone before our Western reality has acknowledged the cosmos, the battle between good right. and evil, the Vikings with the God on the front of their ship to appease mm -hmm. the storm God. There was always that awareness. And it's seen as superstition exactly. uh, today. And, and the fact of the matter is the quote, quote, profundity of our intellectualized culture. You know, God has, has he gave us the remarkable capabilities of our intellect and our capacities to think. But you can think yourself right on past the truth when you become so persuaded you know everything that you fail to recognize that there is a God that's revealed some things we only get by revelation from Him. And uh, the Lord's made very clear to us the simplicity of the goodness He's given us in His Son and the simple realities that there are, there's, a, there's a war waging around you and if you don't take an armor, uh, the armor that's available and protect yourself and uh, enter into the conflict and gain victories that are available to you, that you become a victim of the circumstances. Well, this all may sound heavy, but uh, uh, you talk about advancing beyond the usual limit. And I just want to read this. Oh, I think this is a faith igniting, hope inspiring statement. God sees something in me that excites him something of life and purpose for you that is the reason he called you to himself. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I think the most exciting thing about the, the truth of the Word of God is, the, in, is to discover the enormity of God's delight with his creature man, not with the fall, not with the failures, not with the mistaken choices, but he he really does dearly love us and treasure us. And that's why he paid so great a price to regain the possibility of our opening to discover how grandly and marvelously he cares. Mm -hmm. And what the largeness of his purpose is in us. You know, that passage in Ephesians chapter one where Paul said that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened that you may know what is the greatness of his hope in you. It's just 
each one of our four children, <clears throat> Anna and I would hold in our hands and look at this little child and get excited about what has now become adult and parenting and some of them grandparents now, realities and uh, with fruitful lives and we've had hopes for them. Well, God has brought us to himself and says, I've got hopes for you and it's not God saying, I just, you, I get tired of you and I wish you'd leave me alone. He's saying, you know, stick with me. There's a lot of stuff I'm gonna do with you. <laughs> so I, I just, I love that. And that's, the, the gospel is not just good news about forgiveness. It's good news about fulfillment of God's purpose in us. Life to the full. Yep. Well, we're sitting with the man whose church pioneered the mega church movement in the United States over half a century as a pastor, yeah. preacher. Yeah. I, I just feel we would really miss something if we didn't have you lead us in a prayer that would, if we embrace it, open our hearts and agree with you, uh, get us in a good place for the battle of just today. Let me, uh, uh, shall I pray or address the camera or what? You can talk to that camera. Right, right there. there, there it is. I wanna say as we pray that the Lord is totally committed to you and he, he wants to answer this prayer. So we're not doing anything fingers crossed and hoping, mm -hmm. wishing on a star. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person viewing this broadcast that right now there would come the entry of the revelation, the unfolding like sunrise to their hearts to see the panoramic beauty of your purpose for them and the dimensions of your light that dawning around them will show them the way to drive back the darkness in this world and learn how to advance that penetration of the darkness through their life as well as in their life. Grant that in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, for your glory. Amen.